A traditional quantum mechanics introductory course typically introduces probability density as the mod square of the wave function. This has the effect of downplaying the phase of the wave function, as wave functions are complex numbers. Today we'll examine the phase of the wave function, and recover as much classical intuition as possible. We begin by stating the position basis Schrodinger equation. Knowing state, the probability density is given by the mod square of the wave function, which is Born's rule. These two postulates, along with some tedious algebra, will be able to recover what's known as a continuity equation. In quantum mechanics, this equation is a mathematical statement of conservation of probability. This equation is not unique to quantum mechanics. In fluid mechanics, this equation states the conservation of mass. The first important law we learned is that probability can neither be created or destroyed, but only transferred from one place to another. Due to this close analogy with mass current, it is also valid to think of probability in quantum mechanics as a fluid. Natural for fluid, we want to know which direction and how fast it flows. J in fluid mechanics is mass current density. J in quantum mechanics is probability current density. It is defined as follows. It is a complicated expression. To gain insight into what it's saying, we need to write the wave function in its polar form, where theta is the phase of the wave function. Through even more tedious algebra, we'll be able to recover the velocity of the probability current by considering the current density as a product of mass density and velocity. Math tells us del theta is a vector pointing at the direction in which the phase changes the fastest. The length of this vector gives how rapid this change is. Velocity is proportional to del theta for constant mass. The gradient of the phase of the wave function gives the velocity of probability current. For a wave function of a state of well-defined momentum, its phase is the dot product of position and momentum vectors divided by constant h-bar. Del is a vector differential operator, and it can be written as partial by partial vector x. Acting this on the dot product gives momentum vector p over h-bar. Plug this back into the expression we got earlier to get v equals to p over m, or v equals to v using the classical definition of momentum. V on the left hand side is the velocity of the probability current and V on the right hand side is the classical velocity of an object. The type of velocity involved if you throw an object into the air. This is the velocity we are familiar with. Exploiting this relationship allows us to gain intuition of quantum mechanics by recovering classical trajectories from the flow of probability fluid in quantum mechanics. In this example of a state of well-defined momentum, the phase of the wave function changes as we travel along the x-axis. Wave function twisting more rapidly means the phase changes more rapidly and probability current is faster, corresponds to a faster moving particle, which agrees with classical picture. This intuition is also extremely useful when we look at spherical harmonics, which are angular parts of the wave function of a hydrogen atom, which are also the different shapes of atomic orbitals if you are a chemist. The shapes of these orbitals are extremely important in a chemical reaction, as chemical reaction is fundamentally the interaction between these orbitals, or the interference of wave functions, like everything else. Organic chemists predict reaction mechanisms mainly by considering these orbital interactions. We'll discuss about atomic orbitals in more detail in future, but a simple illustration is that electron in a d orbital is in a sense classically orbiting around the nucleus, faster than a p orbital because the wave function changes its phase more rapidly around the nucleus. As d orbitals have four pedals like a lucky four-leaf clover, but p orbitals only have two pedals. d orbitals can only exist with three or more units of energy, but p orbitals can exist with two or more units of energy, because in a sense, putting all two units of energy in circular motion of the electron is not enough circular motion of a d orbital. f orbital can only exist with four or more units of energy for the same reason. We can extend this view to molecular orbitals. The highest energy molecular orbital of benzene has the classical picture of electrons circulating above and below the plane of atoms much more rapidly than lower energy molecular orbitals, which roughly agrees with classical intuition. For a more rigorous example, let's consider the motion of a charged particle in the magnetic field, which leads to what's called the Landau quantization which is basically the quantization of cyclotron orbits due to the quantization of energy, like a quantum harmonic oscillator. 
the uniform magnetic field system is also similar to quantum harmonic oscillator because we can solve the Schrodinger equation in almost exact the same way. The Hamiltonian for the motion in the magnetic field is given by this expression, where Q is electric charge and A is magnetic vector potential, and this curl gives the magnetic field. The minus QA bit is because of a technical reason involving gauge transformation and relativity. We have chosen our magnetic field to be parallel to the z-axis. The Schrodinger equation can be solved by introducing ladder operators defined as follows. Energy spectrum turns out to be identical to classical harmonic oscillator and are known as Landau levels. We can then find the wave functions and probability current density through even more tedious algebra. But I know you guys are not interested in tedious algebra, so let me do them and plot the results. This is the modulus of the wave function in an xy plane. The height of the graph corresponds to the probability of finding the particle at that location in an xy plane. The ground state is a bell curve, peaked at the origin. In other words, the charged particle doesn't have a classical circular orbit in the ground state. The first excited state has a ring peak, suggesting we are likely to find the particle on this ring. This corresponds to a classical circular orbit. If we go into second and higher excited states, the ring peak gets larger, which again agrees with our classical intuition of more energy corresponds to larger cyclotron orbits. In fact, classically, the radius is proportional to the square root of energy of the particle, which is recovered from quantum mechanics for high energy particles. The difference is that classical mechanics predicts a trajectory of infinitely narrow ring in the xy plane, where quantum mechanics predicts at small scale, ring is a bit wider and ring size is discrete. This has far-reaching consequences and its research has led to three Nobel Prizes so far. This is a vector field of probability current in the xy plane. The arrows are the probability currents. Red arrows are fast currents, blue arrows are slow currents. Direction of arrow is the direction of current. The current is clockwise for a positively charged particle, which agrees with clockwise trajectory predicted by classical mechanics. As we go to higher excited states, the current gets faster and the whirlpool gets larger. In a sense, quantum mechanics predicts a set of trajectories weighed by probability, and all this information is encoded in a wave function, where classical mechanics only predict a single trajectory. Quantum mechanics tells a much more detailed story about our reality compared to classical mechanics. We humans don't understand quantum mechanics intuitively because we are by construction unable to be aware of the intricacy and the beauty of the fundamental nature of reality. However, not all hope is lost. The goal of this video is to show you how we can recover classical intuition by considering the flow of probability current as a set of classical trajectories, and hopefully this swift recovery of classical intuition allows us to be more comfortable with quantum mechanics and accept it as a description of reality from the bottom of our hearts.